Next week is the NBA draft, and everyone knows that the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to take Jerry Dupree, the standout guard from Duke, with their number one pick. But beyond that, there are a lot of question marks. Yeah, it's going to be tough for the Clippers and Lakers to come up with much of anything this year. Neither team has a pick until the second round. Yeah, and it might be a long shot, but there's a rumor that the Lakers are coveting Jerome Jenkins, the former UCLA standout. But let's not forget that before Jenkins was a nobody, he was a somebody. Remember, this kid led the Bruins to back-to-back -back appearances in the Final Four, but a tragic hit and run on the Los Angeles freeway ended his collegiate career with a torn ACL and MCL. Yes, and sadly, that knee injury was the beginning of Jenkins' fall from grace. He lost his direction, his scholarship, and, and all that has changed. The word on the street is that Jenks got his life back on track. He's been rehabbing hard, and the Lake Show has given him a legitimate... Welcome to Aspiring Hollywood, everyone. I'm Luciano Saber, and my guest today is director-producer Josh Mitchell, who's working on a web series called Pick and Roll. Josh, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good to see you officially. Yeah, I know officially, we've, yeah. We've known each other here and there, but yeah, to be here, I, I, it's exciting to be here with you. Talk about your, uh, your Pick and Roll project. Pick and Roll, yeah. It's an okay. exciting new web series. We're calling it a TV show. Uh, basically, it follows the story of Jerome Jenkins. Jerome Jenkins was a UCLA hoop phenom and his life kind of got thrown out of track by a freak motorcycle accident. He, was, he led his team two years in a row to the Final Four. And then the, on the off season of his junior year, he gets sideswiped by a car on the way to his practice. So his life is kind of thrown out of whack. He hits rock bottom and we pick up the story as he's trying to rehabilitate and get back to that fighting form he was at. Mm -hmm. So it's a redemption story. Um, if you're a basketball fan, we dub it as Entourage meets the NBA. Oh, really? So we've been getting some great buzz. ESPN just did a big feature on us. Oh, wow, that's great. What made you do this project? The interesting uh, trajectory with the story is, you know, I'm also a Hollywood publicist, so I represent a lot of writers, directors, filmmakers. I represented this screenwriter talent called Tanner Grover, based out of Maine. So I was in Boston at the time. He sort of brought this project to me. It was called Long Shots. Now, Long Shots had a more sort of quirky feel to it. It was almost like a vehicle for Will Farrell. Mm -hmm. Now, I was getting ready to transition from Boston to Hollywood, and, you know, I'm starting to think of, in the pipeline, what are some of the projects that I want to sort of bring to fru uh, fruition? Right. So I sort of revamped it with him. He's partnered up with me, and we co-created the series. I renamed it Pick and Roll. Uh, I had a major audition out here, and it was a challenge, though, because, um, you know, you can find those great actors, but they can't play basketball. Right. And you find the basketball players who kind of, you know, look like <laughs> Steve Urkel out there. Uh. They just can't really, you know, they don't have the chops. So right. it took me a little while. I uh, luckily stumbled upon Patrick Jeremiah Rigby, who's this 21-year-old fresh-faced kid. He had played Division I basketball in Southern Cal. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Basically, you know, uh, after putting him through the ringer and, uh, you know, rehearsing the heck out of him, right. we, uh, we, we turned the cameras on. Um, and, it, you know, I, I had a great team. Right. You know, uh, people, obviously, you know, it's such a collaborative art to do these things. It is. And just to get a production off the ground is a huge accomplishment because it's just so difficult to finance it and to get everything coordinated and shot. So congratulations on that. But let me ask you this. Is this your first time directing? Oh, no. I directed, uh, I've directed a handful of small indie projects. One being was called Roid Rage. Uh -huh. Roid Rage was just, you know, I made it for the price of a protein bar. Okay. But I took it all around. It's kind of interesting because that's how I became a publicist. Made this small indie film, me and my best friend partner back in a place called Hingham, Massachusetts, <laughs> south of Boston, okay. Pat Ryan. Him and I formed Wicked Pissa Productions, and we made Roid Rage. It's about an independent steroid dealer that gets a designer drug from the UK. Yeah. Turns out it's contaminated with a strain of mad cow disease. Oh. When mixed with the <laughs> anabolic steroid, it creates the ultimate roid rage. Ah. So I ended up going out to Sundance Film Festival. I sort of learned the ropes of the festival circuit out there. I mm -hmm. started building my Rolodex. My distribution list started to become more robust. So because mm -hmm. of my personality, I've, that's when I formed my company, Wicked Piss of Publicity. Okay. And each year it just started growing and growing. And, you know, it's all under the same umbrella. As you know, out here in La La Land, we have to be a hyphenate, right? Yeah, so exactly. now, you know, publicist pays the bills, but, you know, my passion, I'm really a writer, director, filmmaker, publicist. Right. So, right. as you know, I mean, you're an actor, director, writer, host. 
I yeah. know everything you do. <laughs> yeah. Slash model, uh, slash supermodel. Uh, supermodel. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Oh, you've seen that. I've seen the work. Yeah. <laughs> Photoshop's awesome. It is, isn't Clean it? Clean your clothes on those uh, abs. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. So what, let me ask you this. If, if uh, an aspiring director is watching today, what advice would you have for, for him or her? Well, we live in a great world now with the technology, and it's just amazing. I mean, I try to, I, I always tell my clients, you know, think of what Shakespeare or Hemingway would have done with the social media and everything. Mm -hmm. So my advice would be, you know, pick up a camera and sort of get in the trenches. You know, a lot of people, film school, of course, lays those nuts and bolts for learning films. But yeah. my advice is, you know, consume as much content as possible because that will give you your aesthetic and your visual. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a filmaholic. I, I devour, you know, indie films like it's, you know, Cheerios for breakfast. Oh, really? So you, I think that, you know, l learn, learn the basics, but, you know, you live in a great world where you can get these nice DSLR cameras and, you know, great, you know, create a really quality image for, for a low price tag nowadays. Speaking of that, what are you shooting pick and roll with? We're shooting on uh, the 7Ds. Yeah, we got a multi-camera shoot. We pimped them out with a little, you know, some nice lenses and just lighten the heck out of it. But, you know, similar to what you do with the program here, we're, we're, we're shooting for the web right now. You know, so we have our own YouTube channel and, uh, you know, we're, we're generating subscriber base that way. And we're going to kind of announce ourselves to the industry. I just interviewed, a, um, an, uh, ironically enough, a, a, a publicist just before you. And we were talking about that side of the business. Do you have any comments about the business? My old saying is stars are born, publicists find them. <laughs> but no, I think yeah. if you're serious in this business and you really want to step up your game and elevate your exposure and visibility, and I heard a little bit about the interview and he had some you know, insightful things to say and I'll echo some of the stuff he says and it's just, you know, you need somebody that's sort of adding that credibility to you. You could be out there and I'm a little surprised, you know, I come from Boston, I think I'm bringing a different flavor to the Hollywood scene out here because, um, you know, you really got to be pounding that pavement every day. It's got to be almost like a full-time job. And, you know, I tell a lot of my clients, I'm like, you know, you got to be, you got to be knocking down doors. Don't wait for someone to knock on your door. Right. Good things come to those who initiate really, you know, so every, every lead you have, you know, you got to be maximizing all your connections, you know, attending those great events, but also doing a lot of direct marketing. A lot of people, you know, I get the breakdowns and there's, there's little tricks that you can do that I, I, I coach my clients on some backdoor ways to sort of make relationships. And I'm talking about utilizing those social medias to, sure. you know, to break down traditional methods. Well, sure, but you must also have something valuable to talk about. You need a project or something that, that you're promoting, right? I mean, you can't just say, hey, I want to be a director or an actor, look at me. You'd have the credibility of a bald-headed barber if you did that, <laughs> or a toothless dentist. Yeah, content is king out here. That's, you know, that's the bottom line, and that's what I'm trying to show a lot of people in my orbit, and that's why you know, in six months I've been here, and we've, we're creating episode after episode of this show, Pick and Roll, and you know, I have a handful of you know, compelling projects in the pipeline that I'm going to be taking to the marketplace this year. So really, yeah, if you're a young actor, write something, announce yourself. Like, best story is, you know, John Favreau, Vince Vaughn, you know, they, they made Swingers. Billy Bob Thornton made Sling Blade. You know, we can talk about Robert Duvall. He was already in there, obviously, with Apocalypse Now and everything. But, you know, he made, he made um, The Preacher, The Apostle. Matt Damon and uh, Ben Affleck. Yeah, yeah, they're the classic story of, you know, putting themselves out there. With a little help, I think, but yeah. yeah. Hey, they've done, they've done well for themselves. So what's next for you? Where do you see yourself five years from now? Oh, uh, good question. Barbara Walters over here. Um, I hope to just continue to be making insightful and engaging content, you know? So I got a project called Out for Buckner. It's about Red Sox great Bill Buckner that I'm sort of picking up steam on now and I want to take to the festivals. I really enjoy... Um, Working on that indie level, you know, really intimate sets. I can't be on these big blockbuster type films where you're waiting, you know, five hours to shoot a two minute scene. That sort of takes the fun out of it for me. And I know this kind of sounds crazy. I'm just an indie guy, you know. I just, I really like to sort of go gorilla, you know, have a really, you know, not high, high blockbuster type special effects film. So Out for Buckner is going to be a fun one to kind of take out to Toronto, South by Southwest, Sundance, Cannes. 
So that's, that's my immediate goal. Look, you seem like an outspoken, outgoing, confident guy. That's for the most part. Yeah, for the most part. I think we all, you know, we all have our, our doubts and our fears. Yeah, but. exactly. And, and, and that's what I was going to ask. What is your fear? My fear is just not trying, really. You know, I've, I might as well have a reject sign on my head. And that goes for women, from projects I've tried to do, from, you know, Everything I've tried to engage in, we're always, you know, failure is the falling down, not the staying down, right? So my biggest, my biggest fret, failure is just not an option, I guess. You know, I can't, I can't, you know, um, I can't even fathom it. I mean, just got to keep chasing the dreams. There's nothing else out there for, for Josh Mitchell other than entertainment? I don't think so. I've tried. I've tried. Uh, you might see me on. You might see me over here on Lancashire with a little sign. You know, if I'm not able to generate that, you know, some monetize some of these projects. But you know, you, I won't. I won't go down not swinging. I'll put it that way. <laughs> I believe that, my friend. And you guys, watch out for Josh Mitchell because you're going to see more of them. So uh, tell me, where can people see Pick and Roll? Pick and Roll, very important. Yeah, we'd love for you to check it out at Pick and Roll the series. So YouTube backslash pick and roll the series you can also find us on facebook at facebook.com backslash pick and roll the series look me up at uh, wicked piss of publicity .com. and uh yeah josh thank you for joining us on aspiring hollywood and good luck with pick and roll and thank you guys for watching please visit us again at aspiringhollywood.com our youtube channel and on facebook until next time i'm luciano saber see you then